Hey, what's up guys? So I've got this Raspberry Pi project here and up until now I've been powering it from the onboard micro USB connector, which really isn't going to work for me in this project. So I came up with this very simple little circuit over here and that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. So we've got a single push button here that when we press it, it will power on the Pi, then it starts to boot up. So let me prop that up there and we'll let that boot up. And this single button will also allow us to safely shut down the Pi, which is very useful because now I don't have to unplug anything or risk damaging the contents of the SD card. And I've actually had that happen to me before. So let's let this boot up and we'll be right back. Okay, so now the Pi is booting up and just like I showed in the last video, we are automatically launching the application here on boot up and that is a processing sketch and within that sketch we are monitoring this push button here so when I press it you can see that the screen goes red now what's cool about this is that if I hold this down we start a timer within the sketch and then after some period of time there you see it now the screen went green we can let go of the button then the processing sketch will execute a safe shutdown command to the Raspberry Pi. It safely shuts down, then drives a GPIO pin back into the latch circuit to unlatch the 5 volt power going to the Raspberry Pi. So this is great for battery powered applications as well. I mean, not only is it extremely elegant, but also right now this is consuming no current whatsoever. So that's what we're gonna talk about here in this video, all about this circuit here. All right, so we're just gonna jump right into the schematic here. And uh, this is exactly what I've got on that breadboard. And keep in mind that you can swap a lot of these parts out for whatever you've got on hand. This is just what I had laying around in my lab. So right up here is the button, the single button and i did make a video about this exact latch circuit a while back i'll make sure to have a link to that in the in the description below but it's pretty straightforward uh, we've got the button right here and we've got this 10k pull up here so when you press this button here it turns these two npn transistors on so it pulls those collectors down to ground we'll talk about this first one right here and this is the one that's going back to the Raspberry Pi, providing a status of what this button is doing. So we've got that tied to GPIO 20 at the Raspberry Pi, and that's what we're monitoring in the processing sketch. So when we see this pin go low, we know that the button was pressed. Otherwise, it's pulled high by the internal pull-up of the Raspberry Pi GPIO input. And we'll get into that when we go over the code. Over here, this NPN, when it goes low, it's going to pull the gate of this P-channel MOSFET low, right, which will turn it on. This is a P-channel MOSFET, so when you pull that gate low relative to the source here, it's going to turn it on. And this main P-channel right here is what's providing the current or the power to the Raspberry Pi. So we've got a five volt input on its source and then the drain is connected right over to the five volt pins on the GPIO header. And what I actually had to do here, because these little breadboards can't really carry a lot of current, is I soldered, uh, yeah, I might have to zoom in on this. I'll zoom in on that later. But anyway, I soldered the uh, actual cable from the wall adapter, the positive wire, straight to the source pin of that P-channel FET. And then on the drain, also soldered a wire, and then that's going straight over to the GPIO header. Because the Pi can pull up to 2 amps, so that's another thing to keep an eye out for. And especially with this P-channel, it's got to be pretty beefy, and that's why we've got it in a big TO220 package. And I've got the part numbers listed out here for reference, so they're pretty. these are common parts too, so you probably, you might even have these exact parts. Okay, so the other thing too, by the way, is this five volt wall adapter that I'm using is running a little hot. I think it's about 5.2 volts, okay, which is good because we're going to have a little drop here due to the RDS on of this P-channel FET. Um, okay, so when that turns on, what happens here is we now have five volts right here, 
which is then feeding back to this end, cha end channel MOSFET, thus turning it on. And when this turns on, it's going to pull this line low. So when you push this button, you pulled it low through this NPN. This, so then when you let go, of course, this end channel takes over and keeps that pin low. So that's how the whole latch circuit works. Then to unlatch, all we have to do is pull this gate low. And that's the reason for this 10K resistor right here. So we don't put a you know, dead short on this gate here to ground. So the 10K limits the current there down to ground through this end channel FET. And previously in my last video on this whole uh, latch circuit, I actually just had a push button here. So it was a push button to turn it on and a push button to, to turn it off. And I think I might have gotten into how like an Arduino could kill power to itself by driving the gate of another transistor to pull this low. And that's what we've got down here. So this allows the Raspberry Pi to unlatch this circuit or kill power to itself. And that's kind of a tricky thing to do because the power, if we're going to use a high going signal, we don't have to, we could probably redesign this, simplify it, but that's, this is what I've got. Um, a high going signal, well, we're killing power to it. So that signal is gonna go away. So that's why we've got this uh, whole network of resistors, capacitors, and a diode. So this is the unlatch signal from the Raspberry Pi on GPIO pin 21, GPIO 21. When this goes high, it's going to charge up this big giant capacitor here and we get a pulse. You know, we're not going to just get like a tiny little uh, blip there. We're getting a pretty decent signal back then I feed that through a 10 ohm resistor. And the only reason for that is because this is a pretty big capacitor here. So I just wanted to limit the current a little bit, just a little bit of that inrush current so I don't blow out my Raspberry Pi pin. So through the Schottky, through that 10 ohm, charge up this 22 mic cap, and then that will just hold this pin high and long enough that the end channel can turn on and then unlatch the circuit. The five volts goes away, but as that's going away, we've got this blocking shocky diode so that the signal that we just drove high to charge this cap up can't go back into the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so we charge that up and hopefully that stays charged long enough to keep that, to keep this uh, gate low long enough to kill the power to itself. And if you didn't do that, well, as soon as you go to kill your own power, you're going to lose this GPIO 21 pin and this will probably just come back right back up because you're gonna lose that and then it relatches itself. Okay, because this is gonna be going down five, four, three, you know, and so on. So it took a little bit of experimentation to get these values just right. The 100K here acts as a pull down for the end channel FET so that keeps it off, but also acts as a discharge for the 22 mic cap, okay? And that's pretty much it, okay? So really all we have here is the push button, okay? These are like, I'm, th I'm th talking about like the inputs and outputs to the circuit. We've got the button, we've got the status going back. And by the way, I had to, from my last video on the latch, I had to add these two transistors. Otherwise, you know, I could just drive this directly from the push button and that would be totally fine and just have this push button pull low. And that's how the latch circuit worked previously. Now. I had to do that though because I had to isolate these two systems from each other. Okay, so when the push button uh, turns on, right, uh, previously I was pulling this line low with the push button. Well, it's then latched low. So I could never read the status from it. So if none of that's making sense, don't worry about it. But if you did see that video and you're wondering why I changed that, well, that's why. So now we have the two NPN transistors. One's for the latch, one's for the status back to the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so that's pretty much all there is to the circuit, okay? So the GPIO 20 going back, GPIO 21 coming into this to unlatch, and then the five volts going to the Raspberry Pi power. Okay, so now let me show you the breadboard. Okay, so here it is. There's not really much to see here, but if I do pull this TO220 P channel fed out. You can see that I did solder the uh, main power positive uh, uh, wire directly to the source. And then from the drain, that goes right over 
to the Raspberry Pi's 5 volt input pin. And it actually has two 5 volt pins, but anyway, uh, just one works. And I'm using a pretty heavy gauge wire here. The, uh, the negative wire here, let me get this moved over here, is going straight to ground on the GPIO header. And then I bring another ground over from the Raspberry Pi back to the breadboard circuit for its references, okay? It's not a, cur a current carrying conductor, so I can use these standard little hookup wires, right? Okay, so anyway, I will have a link to the pinout here of this GPIO header as well. And by the way, I like using GPIO 2021 because they're all the way down here at the end of the uh, GPIO header, which, you know, are those typically those pins aren't going to be used by uh, various hats that you might use, like a TFT screen or something else. So that's why I did it that way. Okay, now we're going to review the uh, one thing that you have to do in the Raspberry Pi to enable that unlatch signal on GPIO 21 to go high when you get the safe shutdown. So let's go over that real quick and then we'll jump into the code. Okay, so this will be pretty quick because I realize looking at a screen like this is not easy. So let's go to the Pi here, open up terminal, and we're just gonna make one quick change here. So do a sudo space nano space uh, forward slash boot forward slash config dot txt and then we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom of this file and we just have to add this line right here and I already did this and by the way I will have this um, this in the description below but what that says there is dt overlay equals gpio dash power off comma GPIO pin equals 21. Okay, so that's the only thing we have to do. Then we'll do a control X. And since I didn't make any changes, it didn't ask me to save, but otherwise you would hit Y and then enter. Okay, so that's the only thing we have to do to the Pi. Now when you do a shutdown, you will see it safely shut down. And if you probed that signal with an oscilloscope or something, you would see then that pin go high uh, after the, the shutdown is complete. And you can use that pin like we're using it here to unlatch the power circuit. Okay, so now let's just jump into that processing code. All right, so jumping into the processing sketch here, this is pretty straightforward. And this is the same sketch that I've been talking about in the last couple of videos for the laser target app. But everything I show you here in this video, you can just copy right out of this into any processing sketch. So right at the top here we have the import of the processing.io library. So now we can read and write to the GPIO pins on that Raspberry Pi header. And then scrolling down a little bit here, we set up that pin 20, and that's the push button input, and that's a GPIO pin mode, pin mode 20, and we need to use the input pull-up resistors. So we have that enabled right there. So now we can read that pin and then scrolling down here in the in the loop or the void draw, we've got this new code down here, which is what keeps track of when and you're, you're pushing that button. And if it is held down for over five seconds, then on the release of it, it safely shuts down. So just kind of working through this here, you can see that we read the pin here. So if it is low, equal to a GPIO.low, and the timer is not running, then we want to start the timer. Okay, so we have that, we set that Boolean there as true, and I've got these defined up here as globals. So if I just scroll up here, you can see we've got the Boolean there for when the timer starts. And then also the, the uh, variable we're going to use to store the current time. So that's what that does. So right away, if you press the button, like right now, if I just tap this, you see the screen goes red. And if you let go of it, down here we have this and it just stops the shutdown timer. So it sets that to false if, anytime you let go of it. We'll talk about this stuff in here as well. So right away though, if you press that button, it starts the timer and then makes the screen go red. So we set the background to red. And then if it keeps looping through this, by the way, it doesn't actually set the background here. It doesn't actually refresh or update the screen. It has to go through the entire void draw loop. 
So it goes through this whole thing and then at the very end is when it actually updates the screen because uh, originally I was doing some while loops in here but I couldn't update the screen because you have to allow this void draw loop to continue through before it actually updates the screen. Okay, so anyway, moving along here. So we, we make that background red and then right here, if it's still low and the timer has started, and but the timer is less than five seconds, keep it red, so no change. Otherwise though, if it's still low, the timer's running, but now we're greater than five seconds, make the background green. So this is telling you, the user, to let go of the button. And the reason I don't shut down here while I'm still holding the button is because as soon as it shuts down and kills power, it's just gonna apply power again because you're holding the, the button that turns that P channel FET on. So that's why I shut down on the release of the button. Okay, so then now we have the green screen and now what happens though is right here, we're still holding it down and it would continue to, to make the screen go green. We'll just, I'll just show you that right here. So if I press the button, it starts that timer and then after we hit the five seconds, the screen goes green like that. But see, nothing's happening because this is the only thing that's true right now because I'm still holding it. But right here, the next one, when I let go, there you go, now he lost the power. Right here, now you let go of the button. You see not equal to low. Timer started and you're greater than that five seconds. Then we actually shut down the system. So right here, I actually print out shutting down and then we call this function here shutdown going down here. And I found this actually on Stack Overflow or maybe I found it, I think that's where I found it. But um, anyway, we have to do this try catch thing here and uh, we go, we try to shut down down here and I've got this separate function right here to trigger the uh, shutdown routine. And this here, I actually tried putting up here, but it would take it like 10 seconds to completely shut down. But if I had it in a separate function down here, it's instant. As soon as it shuts down, boom, kills power. Okay, so right here though, you can see uh, uh, runtime dot get runtime dot execute and then this is just like if we type this into the terminal on the Raspberry Pi we do a sudo shutdown now and then that shuts it down and then built into the Pi then it shuts down because it's gonna exit out of the sketch and then we get that GPIO 21 to go high and then that shuts down the Raspberry Pi okay so that's all there is to this code. And then we, uh, after it calls that, then we, uh, we exit out of the sketch. Oh, but it would, it would exit out all by itself anyway, because as soon as you call this shutdown command here, it's going to shut it down. Okay, so a couple things just to point out. So that is, that's everything you would need to know about this, but a couple things that I ran into on this. First, I had a couple issues with the GPIO library here, this, uh, processing.io library. For some reason, sometimes if I ran it here within processing, it would not work. It would give me a fatal error saying I don't have permission to control GPIO. But if I did a file export application out, it worked fine. Then what's strange is if I went back into the sketch and hit the play button, it would work. So just keep that in mind. I'm not really sure that was something that was, that was coming up that that I wasn't sure about. Also, it seems like if you export the application out on the actual Raspberry Pi over here, it it it, it works. Uh, but for some reason, if you export it out, like say here on my MacBook Pro and then drag it over, for some reason it won't run. So I'm not sure exactly what was going on there, but another thing to keep in mind, maybe these issues are, are, are actually not issues, but uh, anyway. Just a couple things that I, I found out along the way. So that is, I think, everything I wanted to show you in this video. Hopefully you found that interesting. I'm probably gonna build this up into some kind of simple proto board or maybe even spin up a custom PCB, not sure yet. Uh, so you might see an update to this whole project. But anyway, that's everything I got. Thanks for watching.